Welcome to Infoblox Chalk Talks, the best practices educational series for core network services design and deployment. Hi, my name is Mike Lansky, Technical Support Manager here at Infoblox, and today we're going to talk a little bit about DHCP redundancy, especially wrapped in the form of split scope and DHCP failover. Let's dig into what is DHCP redundancy and why you should care about it. So what is DHCP redundancy? DHCP redundancy is simply that. It is a redundant way of doing DHCP. In today's networking environments, there are a lot more IP capable machines with your handhelds and your voice over IP devices, all of those needing IP addresses. It's very, very important that these get their IP addresses, so you want a redundant solution so that if for some reason one of your DHCP servers should fail for some reason, or you have a network outage, or something blocks the ability of one of these devices from giving out addresses, that you have some other server there that can pick up the slack. So let's look at the two main redundant forms of DHCP, the first one being split scope. So what is split scope? Well, first of all, some people may actually not have heard the term split scope, but heard the term the 80-20 or the 80-20 rule. Split scope is the basically taking your pool of addresses, splitting them into two, one group having 80% of your addresses, the other 20%, hence your 80-20 rule, and putting two servers on your network. One of them is going to serve out 80% of the addresses, the other 20 Problems here with that is that the 80-20 rule forces you to oversubscribe in the number of IP addresses that you need to reserve for DHCP. Considering the simple formula of 80% is less than 100%, 20% is less than 100%, so if you lose either server, you are guaranteed not going to have enough addresses to cover your environment. Right? Because of that, what people will do is redefine what 100% means and add a fudge factor. Because of that, you're now consuming IP addresses that you cannot use for other things in your environment. Um, another big disadvantage to split scope is that since you can't deal with overlapping ranges in DHCP, it doesn't support that. You need to have a unique set of addresses on this server or a unique set of addresses on this server. What that means is if a server actually should go down for some reason or there's a network outage, your device will not be able to retain the IP address that it currently has. So once it goes through its timers of doing the renew, it can't talk to its server. It kicks into what's called the T2 timer, which is what I like to call um, emergency mode or broadcast mode. It broadcasts out to find a server. When it finds that second server, it's going to guarantee get a second IP address. That's going to cause things like your phone calls to just drop if you're on a phone that's doing VoIP. If you've got a web client and you're talking via HTTPS using some sort of SSL encryption, that's going to drop. All of the secure mechanisms dictate that once a connection is made, that IP address remains a constant. As soon as you renew and get a different address, all bets are off and everything drops. So that's pretty bad. You can't deal with that, and there's not really a recovery method other than making that phone call again, restarting the connection, um, making the phone call again, restarting the connection, something very drastic. You don't want to deal with that. That IP address has become very, very important, becomes the identity of the machine. Once you start doing something, you want that identity to remain a constant. So perfect segue, let's switch into DHCP failover. So what is DHCP failover? DHCP failover is another form of redundant DHCP, but it has a lot more to it. It's not as simple as just toss a couple of servers out, put some addresses here, some addresses there. With DHCP failover, you're allowed to have two servers exactly the same configuration. What that buys you is that you don't have to worry about putting some here, some there, and artificially padding how many addresses you're really going to need. Um, that buys you redundancy, reliability, 
if I am a VoIP application, for example, I am a VoIP phone, if I do, for some reason, lose connectivity, either a DHCP server goes down or there's a network outage where I can't renew my address, I'll be able to retain that address because when I talk to that second server, it will have all the information from that first server and be able to say, here you go, here's your address back. Part of DHCP failover is that the two machines are constantly updating each other. So regardless of what server actually hands out the address, both servers always know all the details about every IP address assigned. So no matter who I go back to, for whatever circumstance, it's going to know who I am, it's going to know all the information about my lease, and if I do need to renew, it's going to give me that same lease back. Again, something that SplitScope could not handle. It's great for disaster recovery. You could actually set up two machines and have the two DHCP servers, one in a remote site, and if for some reason a site fails, the other site kicks up and has all of the leases, everything from the state that they were originally in. So again, clients going through a renew cycle don't need to worry about getting all new IP addresses. The all important phone call doesn't drop. When you're on the phone with your boss asking for a raise, you get to finish that thought before saying, I was wondering, click. Not a good thing, I've been there. Now that we've seen DHCP failover, what are the kinds of things that you want to look for when buying a solution that's going to give you DHCP failover and DHCP redundancy? Well, first of all, you remember that there's still two servers in the environment. So one thing that you can look for is some sort of centralized management capability that will allow you to make the change once and push it to both of those systems. What that buys you is a very simple way to do the configuration. You don't need to worry about each server getting out of sync with each other, which in DHCP failover is actually a very messy thing. If you have to keep track on both sides and those two sides don't agree with what they should know, things can get very crazy. So the concept of a centralized management solution for failover is really key. Very, very important. Um, other things to look at is uh, make sure that it's easy to understand. DHCP failover is actually very complicated when you look at it from the protocol side. That doesn't mean it has to be complicated for you to use. So what you want to do is make sure that you have something that's very intuitive when you look at it. You understand how the two machines are going to interoperate with each other, how things are going to work when something is down and when it comes back up. You want to make sure that when you're looking at a failover solution that you find something that is as close as possible to the current standards for DHCP failover. Look for your vendor to provide you with something that is going to change with the times and is going to give you exactly what you need for a redundant, reliable DHCP failover as well as that disaster recovery environment. So, in summary, what have we talked about today? Well, we talked about DHCP redundancy in general, but especially wrapped around split scopes and DHCP failover. Why DHCP failover is obviously the better choice. Remember that whole voice over IP. Think about the calling your boss when you want to get that raise. And do you want to kick into a split scope at that point and hang up on your boss when you're about to tell them why you deserve the raise? Think about that and there is no choice but failover. Um, make sure you look for that failover solution that's going to fit your environment. Make sure it's going to grow with your environment. Make sure it's easy to use. Again, just because the protocol itself is complicated doesn't mean it needs to be complicated for you to use. So make sure that you look for that when you're looking for your solution. Thank you very much for listening to this Chalk Talk on DHCP failover. I hope that you've learned something from it today. We hope you enjoy this Chalk Talk, brought to you by Infoblox. For more information, call us at area code 408-625-4200. Email us at info at infoblox.com or visit us on the web at infoblox.com.